Well, hello everybody. This is Dave Burkus for more insights from Burkonomics. Today we talk about the story of the lion and the ant, a managerial lesson. It's been making the rounds, not quite sure exactly where it came from, so let's credit the unknown person or persons who invented this story. It's a great lesson for all of us. Every day a small ant arrived at work early and started work immediately. She produced a lot and she was happy. The boss, a lion, was surprised to see that the ant was so productive and working without supervision. He thought if the ant can produce so much without supervision, wouldn't she produce more if she had a supervisor? So the lion recruited a cockroach who had extensive experience as a supervisor and who was famous for writing excellent reports. The cockroach's first decision was to set up a clocking and, and attendance system. He also needed a secretary and had to hire somebody, so he recruited a spider who managed the archives and monitored all phone calls. The lion was delighted with the cockroach's report and asked him to produce graphs to describe production rates and analyze trends so he could use them for presentations at board meetings. So the cockroach had to buy a new computer, of course, and a laser printer to recruit a fly to manage the IT department. The ant, who had been so productive and relaxed, hated this new plethora of paperwork and meetings which used up most of her time. The position was given to the cicadia, whose first job, of course, was to buy a carpet and an ergonomic chair for his office. The new person in charge, the cicadia, also needed a computer and a personal assistant whom he had brought from his previous department to help him prepare a work and budget control strategic optimization plan. The department where the ant works is now a sad place where nobody laughs anymore and everybody has become upset. It was at that time the cicadia convinced the boss that the lion needed to start a climactic study of the environment. Having reviewed the charges of running the ant's department, the lion found out that the production was much less than before, and so he recruited the owl, a prestigious and renowned consultant to carry out an audit and suggest solutions. The owl spent three months in the department and came out with an enormous report in several volumes and concluded that the department was overstaffed. So guess who was fired first? The ant, of course, because she showed lack of motivation and had a negative attitude. So the lesson is obvious, and we see examples of this every day. We build our companies with layers of management in the natural course of growth, often quoting that a manager should have no more than six direct reports, or that managers should be free to do important high-level work. We often ignore the ants in our lives, don't we? Thinking perhaps subconsciously that value equates to salary level, or the lowest level workers can be replaced. At best, all management generates creative output and pushes that creativity down to the worker ants in the organization whose job is to work, not to think. Well, in this story, was the lion guilty of just that form of managerial thinking? Why not see the obvious? Just add more ants, hopefully as resources for the first. Or is it more complex? We learn from our experience and education that growth comes from top grading and at all levels of the organization at that, and that the bottom 10% of the workforce must be replaced as we hire A workers. This story was meant to illustrate one folly of common management. I'd take it as a beautiful warning to all of us that some things are obvious in business and that we should focus on what works and reinforce whatever that is whenever we can. Be a better lion. Watch for what's great in each and every ant in your business. Well, I've written a number of books, 14 in all, and you'll find them at Amazon and other retail bookstores anywhere in the world, and I'd appreciate your having a chance to look at them, perhaps buy them and read them. This is Dave Burkus for Insights from Burkonomics. I look forward to seeing you next time.